Hey guys, this is Introducing Emmy, and I just wanted to make a video to show you my process of redoing pages. Uh, this is the first thing I'm doing this morning, so I just woke up, and we'll see if I can do this. I've done it about 400 times now, so hopefully I can explain this pretty quickly. So, uh, on the left hand or on the right hand side, you'll see my layers, and uh, this is mostly how my pages are set up to this day. Even though I did this page, I think in like 2000. 10 maybe or 11 i'm not really sure but uh yeah so my layers are still set up the same way to this day and i'll show you how i redo a page so the first thing i do is i select the entire canvas i had a bad habit in the old days of letting um artwork that's not visible kind of sprawl off the edges of the page and uh, it just adds to my file size so the first thing i do is i crop it to make sure that i've gotten rid of anything that sticks out, usually backgrounds or extra pieces of the uh, the frames. And then this is my uh, template that I use for all my pages. Uh, well, all my redos. So you'll see over here I have uh, a folder that's like the new page and that says text and that has like a demo piece of text in it. And then I have my effects layer with nothing in it right now. I have an example of a vertical uh, frame and a horizontal frame and uh, sometimes these are also just gutters uh, my since my frames and my gutters are black uh, I don't need to have like two separate sort of file things going on here um, this is a uh, just a, a layer that is orange and pink and the orange is anything that won't get cropped and the pink is anything that could get cropped so I try to not let anything bleed over into this pink too much and then I just have a folder for the old page so <clears throat> I pull this out so that I can drop and first I have to make sure I'm on my top layer on the old page so that would be uh, hues text balloons and then I select all this by hitting uh, shift a and I drag it over top of the old page and let it drop in and then I take everything that was part of the old page, which is now pushed all the way to the bottom, put it into old and close that folder. And I don't need this anymore. So I close that. And then uh, it's a little off center here. That doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is this part needs to go in here. And I hit control T and just make sure this is all settled in here. And you can see this layer is set to screen, so I can still see the old page through it, and that will let me start setting up uh, the new page. So um, I have it hotkeyed, but uh, if I hit F6, that will put in um, these guides that I believe are a quarter of an inch or a half an inch. <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> from the side, but whatever your... Uh, whatever your crop is set up to be for like the final pages, that's what you should set yours up to if you're using this as a guide. And then uh, you can see I have a pretty adventurous layout here. I have this sort of like glass shatter thing going on with my frames. Uh, these days I try not to do this too much unless I'm doing an action sequence, I'm establishing some new location or I'm establishing a new character. Then I get more adventurous with my layouts. But if it's just dialogue like this where Kwaski and he are just like talking to each other, I don't uh, do this much anymore. Uh, I was thinking about this page this morning and how I was gonna do it. I was gonna just crop this here, not crop it, but uh, set the new frame up there and so that these are more stabilized, but I kind of like this like sunburst effect of like the way the panels are going. So I am going to uh, try to mimic that as best I can. We'll see how well I can do it. I'm gonna actually turn those off and duplicate them so that I'm not using up the only ones I have and I have to go back to the template and go get them again. So put this on here. Now, uh, when I'm working on new pages, the first thing I do is uh, I have a layout. Let's see if I can do this and talk at the same time. <laughs> I have a layout that I scan for my layout book and that will that guides me on how I want to lay out my pages. And then from there, I put the text in first because I want to make sure that I haven't overestimated or underestimated how much text I can nicely fit on a page. 
in the redos, I kind of already know what I'm in for. See, I think this might look better. The only thing I have to be wary of is I'm going to have to move Hugh's face down because uh, his eye is really getting like chopped up there. I think that'll be okay. So another thing I don't like to do is I don't like to have like one page or like one panel that sits up higher, but maybe that will be okay for this. I think the text. So another thing is like, I put this text here and pretend that this is, this is what Quasi is saying. So I haven't actually put the redone text in, but what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to have it up here now and then have his text here over there. So this panel or this bubble will go up to here. And I think that will make for a smoother reading transition. So you'll start here. And doesn't it feel like his bubble should be naturally like up here somewhere? Um, yeah, say yes. Yes, Emmy. <laughs> uh, right now, what you have to do is when you're reading, turn that off, you see his face, you his mouth's open, and then you have to go over here, read what he's saying, see another face, and read what he's saying after. So you're kind of getting the reaction before you're actually knowing what he's saying, which is kind of weird. Um, it's depending on how you like to read comics. I, I don't know. That feels like a little strange to me. And then you're kind of doing this curve that naturally guides your eye down to this bubble or this panel, I should say, and bubble when it should be more like that. You should be hooking a lot harder on your visual over to this face. So that's what I'm going to try to fix here. But back to what I was doing. I think I'm going to move that there. I would have to pick like, you know, the most complicated <laughs> layout. So another thing is right here, there's a gap. I don't want this gap anymore. Um, this was something I used to do on my old pages a lot where like every other panel would like bleed into itself. So you could see like if I uh, turn off new. so. So you can kind of see how like uh, these pine trees kind of blend like underneath this panel down into Kwaski's helmet thingy. And uh, it, it just, I don't know, it could look okay. I, I could probably pull it off now, but for consistency sake, I don't do it anymore. Um, and also since I'm dealing with almost a thousand pages now, I'm trying to keep everything like way more simple uh, in how I construct these things. So. I'm just using the old frames as a guide. I kind of like this layout, like I said. I, you know, I could see myself using something like this for a more, um, okay, so that's straight. Excuse me, I, uh, I hope I'm not getting sick. <laughs> I feel like I'm losing my voice a little bit. So that is just fully vertical. So another thing is, this is technically the last panel of the whole book right here. I kind of want to do something different here, but I'm not sure what yet. <laughs> That's a problem for future Emmy. So for now, I just want to get the uh, frames in and make them look nice. And of course, all of this you know, can be changed. It's nothing set in stone. So then I just want to go in with the polygonal lasso tool, lasso tool and try to mimic that angle. And I just deselected it. Okay. And then kind of wiggle it up into place here and delete it. So you can see there's like a little bit of a an edge where I kind of had it off a little bit. It, From what I can tell, that's not noticeable in the final book. Because I've done it before. <laughs> okay, so now I um, turn on my crop lines again as a guide and I make a new layer, just briefly. And I'm going to decide where my new borders are going to be. So right now it is 
uh, full bleeding. Okay, it's sort of full bleeding, so like all the frames are hitting right out to the edge. I don't want that. I I want everything to well not every not every panel, but I want most of the panels to have an end. I don't want them to sprawl all the way to the edges of the page. So here, that's nice. That's nice. This is all good, except down here. I think. I think I want this panel to be full bleed since it's the last panel in the book. But these two, no. Yeah, I think I like that. Again, I can always change it, it's no big deal. And I uh, just locked it all and cropped again to make sure that the gutters and frames don't bleed fully out. So now I have a layer, which is now just anonymous layer 11, but I'm going to call it my frames. And then I'm going to duplicate it and call it empty and empty goes into effects and I like to keep a set of my frames around I used to not do this but uh, it's always nice if you just want to select a whole panel to go up into your effects and just be like boop and there it is you just selected your whole frame without having to like I used to use the uh, like the lasso tools to try to do it like that way but it's a pain so I don't do it anymore just try to think ahead and do it that way I'm gonna lock frames and then I'm going to go to my line art layer in the old folder and uh, I want to duplicate this and take the copy up here. Okay. And then I'm going to turn uh, temporarily, I'm going to turn, I don't know what to call this. I, I, I've never named it. Uh, I just guess we'll call it uh, the block. So this blocks my view between the old page and the new page, and I'm going to just call it, uh, or I'm just going to set to normal and call block, okay? And then I'm going to lock it for now. And I, I really think it's important to lock layers as you use and disuse them and just get into the habit of doing that because it will really save you a lot of time if you mess up and start drawing on another layer and you can't go back in your history. So there's multiple ways to do this, but I'm going to make my line art layer uh, pink for the sake of this, and I'm gonna just call this sketch for now. And then uh, I have always find the old frames, the old uh, borders to my, my panels distracting. So I, uh, I have one of my F keys set up to expand uh, selections by two pixels, and I just bounce that a couple times till I can see that it's mostly selected. And I just go in here and erase all the excess frame. You have to be kind of careful if you have these overbleed frames like I do, so you're not erasing old uh, old artwork. Though, I mean, if you want to, go for it because none of this old art is really going to appear in the final version, and we don't need it, so get rid of it. And then just go hold shift to erase in a straight line, either horizontal or vertical. Get rid of these. Don't need any of this nonsense. So one thing you'll notice, and I definitely don't do this anymore, is to save time, I would uh, not draw areas that I knew were going to be under text. So you can see here, there's like a big gap here and a gap here, because that's in the old page, there's two bubbles there. I don't do that anymore. And also the tops of his uh, fingers are missing and tops of his... Uh, like little eyebrow furl thingies are missing. Like there's just areas that are complete because I, at the time I was just like, well, this is it. This is all I'm ever going to do with it, <laughs> which is dumb. I, <laughs> it wasn't all I ever did with it. So I'm just going to knock the, so I can see that a little better. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to my frames and I'm going to start moving stuff around since this is going to be my guide. So I'm going to put hue there. I'm actually going to move this out. Uh, yeah, I'm going to move it out a little bit. So in the original, he kind of, with his face being right there, it's sort of like connected to Kozki's and it looks sort of strange. So I'm going to try to move this out. And then over here, uh, he's like thinking back to something and there's pine trees there. So I know that this is, that's good to go. Now this is strange here. Uh, Kwaski is actually 
sort of looking back over his shoulder. So Hugh is technically standing over here somewhere. And he's like turning his head to look back. I guess maybe thinking about... Because uh, he's talking about how disgusting it is, the, the mind scan. So maybe he's thinking like, ew, like, like ew, your dad does that to you. <laughs> so I can keep this. But... I think his shoulder needs to come out here more, so I'm just going to like roughly draw that in. This is fine, though it might get completely blacked out. Um, Hugh's face is about the right size, but his eyes are now smaller than this, so I'm going to make them a little smaller, a little more narrow. And also, their jaws come down a little further than this now. Put the hint of a neck there a little more. And then, uh, so this one, Kwaski's tail is kind of like in frame, which is fine, but I don't want it anymore. <laughs> It wouldn't be there anyway. It's up way too high. So another thing is he's kind of like at a weird angle where he's he's supposed to be looking at Hugh in the distance. And Hugh is also like really off proportion wise. Something like that. He has longer legs than that. So Kwaski's body is missing here. So I think we're going to just kind of sketch it in here. I think I might even add like his fist on the other side. Now here, I could probably put its tail and get away with it. Oops. I'm trying to think like where it would come out. I guess like right here. See, that's not bad. I'm just gonna have to make sure that um, Hugh is sort of the focal point here because he's doing this like goofy pose and Quasi's excited that they're going to get to go back. So yeah, just make sure that's the focal point there. And now before I normally what I do is I collapse the sketch layer down onto block. Before I do that, I'm going to retype my text, um, which I've kind of prepared ahead of time a little bit. <laughs> I just put it into a word file and capitalized all of it just to make my life uh, a little easier and then I just copy and paste it in. Normally I type it just as I'm going. <laughs> I retype everything. Um, my text is now about 85% smaller. It's uh, 10 point now as opposed to uh, I believe it was 12 point in the old pages. I don't know. Does that sound right? 85% smaller? 12 point to 10 point? Sounds right. So I touched up his dialogue here a little bit. He says um, he's just doing what he thinks is right for you guys. And that is what he says in the original. And then I added er grays. I, I don't know. I like that. And because my text is a little smaller now, I can add in like sort of fluff dialogue that wasn't there originally. Again, it doesn't really change like the um, one second. So I'm putting a border on my text so that I know how big to make my balloons and that they're not too crowded. But uh, I like putting in the fluff dialogue and it doesn't really change the basic meaning of like what was happening uh, between these characters. 
So this is interesting. So this will kind of crop here. And what I can do is in the final page, I can actually have part of his finger go over, though I think his claw is going to kind of knock into looked a little bit. It is fun when you can do that with your characters and you can have like their art overlap the bubbles a little bit. I feel like that makes the uh, the look of it a little more organic and like sort of sinks the balloons into the page a little bit. But for this one, just to be on the safe side, I'm actually going to put it on a slight angle. Now in the final version, I may be able to get away with that and like have his finger overlap a little bit. And if I do, I'll show how I do that. But for now, I'm going to move this just ever so slightly. Okay. And now we're going to go to Hue's text. So he has a lot of dialogue in this panel, which I'm slightly nervous about. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to paste that one there. And anytime there is a sentence break in comics, you only put one space between sentences. I have a bad habit of putting two, which is just how I was taught to type. Um, but when I put the text onto the page, I select wherever the space is at the end of the sentence. Let me get this so you can see it. So like right here between uh, brain and there, this is a new sentence. So I select that double space and I hit enter to knock it down to its own uh, line. Uh, one of the ways I like to set up my balloons is if I can help it, I don't like to have um, I don't like to have uh, sentences start and begin on the or, or begin and end on the same line. So like like here, I wouldn't have there there. there. This is why I don't type while I'm recording because it's kind of laggy, but. Um, now you can, and I do <laughs> from time to time, but I try to avoid it if I can. I just think it looks a little neater, personally. Um, now there are like quote unquote rules for how you're supposed to do all this shit, but <laughs> this is art. <laughs> we don't have to do that. So like one thing I do is I capitalize all eyes in my balloons uh, when you're only supposed to capitalize proper I, like, like I am going to the store. You would capitalize I, uh, as in me, but not I in going. But I don't do that. I just think with my font and everything, I just, I think it looks neater. Again, it's personal preference. I know, again, there are rules, there are rules, but I don't follow them. <laughs> if I wanted to follow rules, I would have been a lawyer, not a comic artist, so. Okay, so here I actually had Hugh explain uh, the mind scan a little more thoroughly because I felt like in the original it didn't get explained as well. Uh, and then I like to put the layers in order of from the first line up to the bottom, kind of work in reverse a little bit, just to make my life a little easier. So that looks good. Yeah. So you can see how much more space I'm saving. Though admittedly, because I've moved his head down slightly, I'm now not saving as much room. I might move this up, depending. Like move it back up into the panel a little bit, but I just, I really don't want it to align with this line on Kwaski's face. That's a big, it's a big deal to me. <laughs> Go back, select it. Oh, so. Okay, there we go. Oh, there was only one space between that. Okay, great. It's weird, you know, I've for actually um, forgotten a good chunk of uh, this dialogue. 
So it's always fun to go back and see it. I don't know why, but uh, once in a while I kind of panic if I have to go back and review pages for print. And I'm like, I'm so worried I'm always going to find some panel where like some character has said something that makes like no sense. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with the story. And like ruins the whole continuity or something. It's like my nightmare. But so far, haven't had that happen. I've had things be slightly off a little bit, but... I guess you can always chalk that up to just characters being unreliable narrators or not knowing the full story of what's going on. So, anyway. So an example of that was um, when in in this uh, in this book, volume three, there's a scene where Kwaski goes to talk to Longus, his brother, and explains sort of this ongoing situation with with Hugh and Rose, and kind of getting caught back up with what Longus is doing, you know, hanging around with Dawn and stuff. So uh, real quick, uh, I didn't put haha -ha in. I'll do that at the end. Like, I'll probably hand draw that. So, anyway. So, there's my text. All in there. A little squished in places. A little too spread out in others. But it's kind of unavoidable. Maybe I could put it down there. I don't know. Figure it out later. <laughs> so, this is why I didn't collapse this layer down. I'm going to actually move Kwaski down a little bit in this frame so that he's not uh, overlapping his dialogue and there's just a little more breathing room between Hugh's shoulder and then Kowalski talking to him. Uh, but now I'll collapse it down and uh, so now we're going to start sketching. But anyway, so while I'm getting this all set up, I'm going to use this panel first because it's easy. Heat. Uh, so the first thing I do is I select this panel. Uh, which would be, let me back out a little bit, which is uh, Hugh's face here. So I select it by using this empty frames layer, or you can use your empty empty layer, whichever. And then I go down to the sketch layer and I hit Control C to copy it. And then I have this. This is like my working area. And over here, so this would be my, uh, so art. <laughs> final art and then uh, this will be my template and then this will be my background. So I have a few effects on my template layer and uh, the main one is stroke. If I turn this off you can actually see that its opacity or its fill I should say is only set to 11. So it looks pretty transparent you can just barely make it out. So what I do is I put my frame in here and then I uh, right click, would that be, yeah, I right click <laughs> over the layer, sorry, I'm using my pen, so I'm trying to think what it is, and I say, uh, it's, it's cut off because of my screen, but over here, you're going to have an option that says copy layer style, and I paste it onto my new layer, and delete that, delete that, that's my working file, and lock the layer, I'll just call this temp again, I never name these layers because they don't last very long, <laughs> and then I just start, uh, drawing my new layer or my new uh, sketch over the old one sorry if I get a little quiet when I'm drawing Oh, but what I was going to say was, uh, so in that scene where Kwaski goes to visit Longus, there's a part where they're talking about Magnus, and if you're all caught up, I won't spoil it, Magnus and Longus kind of have a weird relationship, if you can call it that. And at the time that I wrote that first scene with Kwaski and Longus sitting in the tree talking and stuff, I wasn't 100% on how I, how I was going to portray Magnus and Longus's relationship. 
friendship. <laughs> They're buds. So I was hesitant to even go back and look at the old pages because I was so worried about how the dialogue was, how it portrayed the two of them. And honestly, it wasn't bad. <laughs> But I had gotten myself all into a tizzy over nothing. So anyway, I go down to my temp layer and I select the outside of it. Then I hit control shift I, which will invert my selection. I make a new layer and paint bucket it white. And then I go to my line art layer and say right click and say create clipping mask. It's cut off a little bit by my recording software, but just do it. And it clips down onto whatever layer is below it. Then I hit control E to combine uh, those into one layer. So that's uh, one layer and I select all, copy it, come back over here, make sure that this panel is selected again, hit control V to paste it in place and then control E to flatten it down. And that is now what the new art will look like. I haven't inked it yet, but that's just like to help me, to guide me, guide me on my journey. So let's do this layer. I tend to uh, do the easiest panels first. So same deal again. I paste it into place. I hit uh, right click, say paste layer style, because I still have it copied. Delete the old stuff that I was working on. Hit control S to save this file so that in case anything happens, I can go back and get it again. And then uh, just start the whole process over again. And I just do this for every single panel. Now, the reason I do this is because um, some folks, uh, especially if you work traditionally, a lot of people feel, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like claustrophobic, like you're sort of stuck to your, to follow inside these borders, you know? Like you, you don't want to draw out beyond it. Uh, I don't like doing that for just that reason. I want to be able to draw out past it. When I was being taught to be an animator, <laughs> a thing which I quickly ran screaming from, uh, we were taught to draw beyond the paper. So we would like tape extra pieces of paper below our animation paper to make sure that we were like, had the characters set up correctly and everything. So I kind of carried that over into how I do my comics. So here what I've done is I've drawn sort of the top edge of Kwaski's head. And then I've, uh, on the line art that's extended out, I've sort of done this box around it. And the reason I'm gonna do that is so that I can select the outside and uh, let's make a new layer below it. And paint bucket that in white and then smoosh them together with control E and say Kwaski or just Q, usually I just use the first letter of their name. And then I can turn that off and again, be completely unrestricted in drawing Q. Now, uh, my line art is a little smoother than it would be normally. And uh, I swear this isn't like a paid advertisement, but I always promote this. I use a piece of software called Lazy Nizumi, which is always wants to turn itself off. Uh, I have it actually set to 20 right now, which is pretty high for me, but uh, Lazy Nizumi um, helps steady my hand. It's like one of the best pieces of software I've ever bought ever. It can be used with any other piece of art software. I love it. <laughs> I think you could probably technically use it with anything. I bet you could use it like with 3D modeling and stuff. I just don't know exactly how that would work. I use it with um, Photoshop because uh, Photoshop doesn't really have anything like a line steadying tool. So, but yeah, I forget how much Lazy Nizumi costs. I think it's somewhere between like 15 and maybe $30. I, I got it really cheap when it first came out. So <laughs> it's probably gone up a little bit now, but I use it every day, like 12 hours a day, whatever my work day is. 
<laughs> and uh, it's the best. So I highly recommend it. It pays for itself over and over. They're always updating it, always adding new features. Let's make sure this is tidy. It's pretty good. I've drawn these characters so much now, I don't do a lot of underdrawing. Which I know is a bad habit, but at least for the redos, I don't do a ton of underdrawing. Now the new stuff, I spent a lot of time on. In fact, I just was uh, drawing Roger yesterday and I was getting pretty fed up. Because <laughs> I had to redraw his face like a hundred times, so I wasn't happy with it. Okay. So I'm actually going to just select Hugh, or just select Kwaski, and I'm going to bring up the uh, human saturation window, and I'm going to darken Kwaski's layer just slightly. I want to see. I don't like how this is touching like his shoulder. I don't know. It's weird. I think also his shoulder should be Hugh's shoulder should be larger and sort of. Pitched a little differently. Crap. I think that's good. I think that'll be okay. So in here, that's where the text is gonna go. So nice empty area. I think uh, here I'm going to uh, maybe put like another piece of darker shine. I think that'll look nice there, like that, just to make his helmet thingy look more shiny. And then I can control E, select all, copy, go back to my page, which is still has that uh, panel selected and paste it in. Every now and then I'll flick between the old page and the new page just to make sure I'm not missing some subtle thing about their expre uh, expressions. But overall, that's pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to stop with the commentary and I'm going to just quickly go through and do all these and speed up the video and just make this all go really, really fast and then I'll be back and we'll keep talking about it. All right, here we go. Bam. So here is my finished sketch. Uh, I'm going to export this as a full-size JPEG, one-to-one, uh, -one. I won't rescale it or anything, and I will import it into Manga Studio, or I think it's sometimes called uh, Clip Studio, or Clip Paint Studio, something to that effect. <laughs> I've always called it Manga Studio, and I will be inking it, so yeah, let's get to that now.
Okay, and we're back. Uh, so this is the finished inks, which I've brought back from Manga Studio into Photoshop. So now I'm going to uh, select all the white and delete it and then collapse the inks to the frames. And don't worry, I already have my empty layer. I like to check just to make sure though, because sometimes I forget. Uh, I'm going to lock the sketch layer. I'm going to make a new layer. Uh, I'm going to make this some color that isn't um, exhibited on the characters in some way. So in this case, I'll use orange because orange is not a color that is on Quas Gear Hue. Uh, I'm going to call it BG for now. That will be my background. I'm going to du uh, duplicate my frame, uh, my frame layer, which is now line art. And then this will be my flats. And the flats are like the pure color of the characters without shading. Um, and... Uh, Oops, turn that off. Okay. So uh, I just go through and paint bucket in the colors. Uh, I have Photoshop set to contiguous uh, with anti-alias unchecked so that everything remains crisp and I don't get any bleed over. So I'm technically painting a duplicate layer of the line art. Uh, I hope that makes sense. I'm not actually painting in the final line art. Um, because I work aliased, uh, I don't have a lot of soft shading uh, or soft edges within the comic. Uh, I can kind of get away with this. And also because my pages are very large. So when I shrink them for print, they kind of self alias themselves. Uh, they look uh, nice and sharp, but still soft. when they're scaled down. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> if you don't know the difference between alias and anti-alias, you can always Google it. So we just go through, paint bucket, everything. Of Kwaski's green. That was meant to be black. And then there's a few things that are going to be lighter green. Uh, if I can, I will paint bucket them in now. So, like the skin flap on the inside of his mouth, uh, his nails, his uh, chest plates, those are all a lighter green. So, if I see any of them that are, they're cordoned off enough that I can paint them. I will. He also has these flaps in his armpits that are a lighter green. Uh, but if I can't do them all right now, that's fine. I'll go back and mask them. Uh, so let's do his eyes. Let's do all the metal. This is actually, uh, I have a pretty limited palette on uh, Trying Human, just to make my life a little easier. This is actually the same gray that uh, EB1 uh, has on his arm for his metal arm. All right, let's do white. So only the character's uh, teeth and scleras are white. The human characters have white scleras. Um, in the old version of the comic, uh, Quasi actually has yellow teeth. You can see it there. Uh, all the reptoids do. And I don't know why, but after a while I just kind of got sick of it. I didn't think it looked very good, so I just started doing white teeth. I think uh, sometimes when I was shading their mouths, their teeth would look uh, even darker. And considering how small the pages are online and, you know, at times their mouths can appear small, I was like, you know what, I don't want to make their mouths any darker than they already are so that you can see what they're actually saying and whatnot or how they're moving their mouths. Well, they're not really moving, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> so go through. There's actually a little bit here. 
that I feel like. Yeah, I guess it's fine. Okay, and then we'll do. Gray, uh, hues, eyes, and body are all one color. I always love pages where it's just the grays talking because um, they're very fast <laughs> and easy. Easy to color, easy to draw. Oh, and if you're curious, so sketching this page took just under an hour and inking it took about 40 minutes, I want to say. Um, I know they're sped up, so... Uh, anytime I have to do the reptoids, they sort of uh, slow everything down a touch. <laughs> so... So the only time I use uh, soft shading is when areas are completely... Uh, separate so it's fine for me to put gradients in any of these areas that have a full black outline but I don't like to gradient between two areas if that makes sense uh, it just it makes it more difficult to select things see like when I select it only does like a little ribbon in his eye uh, whereas if I select that whole area you see what I mean because this black out here keeps it separate so I hope that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so here's how I do Quadski's and the other Reptoids plates and things. I always pick a really hot uh, color, like a really jarring color that's different uh, from every other color on the page. And then I make a new layer. And then I simply draw where their chest plates are going to go. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be decent. I need to mask off the nails. fine if it goes outside the lines because I will be deleting this, the, the stuff that goes outside. Okay. And then uh, we take the paint bucket tool, make sure it's set to contiguous with uh, anti-alias uncheck, then check all layers so that it's going to now take into account the black line art layer. So if I turn that off, you can see it's just these like weird shapes that I masked out earlier. And then, uh, oops. See, it just tried to follow the lines there a little too closely and paint bucket it all in. So I just go around and anywhere I've outlined. Okay. And then I take my magic wand tool and I uncheck contiguous. And I hit, uh, I select all the green and then I say control shift invert. And then I go up to my mask layer with that hot pink color and delete it. And then I do a transparency lock. I forget what that's called. <laughs> and hit Control F on the masked layer to color that in my light color. And then I uncheck it, uncheck the uh, transparency mask. And I take my pencil eraser. I'm just gonna kind of clean up the edges and draw the separations in the plates. 
And I try to follow the curve of their chest. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I um, I forget where I read this, but it's something like uh, the average comic reader spends like less than 30 seconds per page, basically as fast as they can read it and look over the art real quick, and then they move on. So as long as the work is not jarring, you're probably good to go. Obviously, you always want to be working towards a better you, a better artist, a better creator of trying human. So try not to cut corners too much, but once in a blue moon, especially on redos, you can kind of let things get a little out of control. No, you can let them get a little wild. Okay, so the last thing I like to do is go around. I make a new layer under my line art, and I just like to make sure that as much black uh, or everything's filled in. Every now and then there will be like little gaps that get left from the way that Mongo Studio uh, connects its lines and inks things. So I like to just make sure there's no little uh, holes in my flat layer. And having like a really um, bright, unusual color for the background helps with this. Filling in a few little gaps here and there. And right there, I forgot to color his badges. So that's good, do that. So like right there, oops, right there on his elbow, there's like a little hole in the art, in the line art. Okay, I think that's good to go. So now I'm gonna collapse that down. Okay, so this part I love doing <laughs> because it, for the redos because it's gotten good. So uh, I noticed my backgrounds around this time were really starting to improve. So um, a lot of my backgrounds are completely salvageable. So what I do is I take, I go into the old folder that still has the original page in it and I take the original background layer and duplicate it and I take the copy up and sort of put it in place. So um, for these pages, one of the things uh, I've been doing, I keep a notebook <laughs> of like what every page needs to have happen. So like flip panel three or, you know, put highlights on this or change this text to this. So I, I keep like a log of how I'm doing this so that I can always go back to reference it. And one of the things that I did for this whole sequence, if I can just like show you this. Uh, so for one of the biggest things was trying human is um, the backgrounds, if you can see like over here, uh, they are generally, they weren't saturated enough. Uh, I, I tended to work in a really like desaturated palette originally. I don't know, I felt like that made my comic more serious or something. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking back then. So uh, the biggest thing I did for this ser uh, set of pages where Hugh and uh, Kwaski are talking is I bumped the saturation of the backgrounds up by 50%. So hit control U and for saturation, I knock it up to 50 and that's already like so much, look, look how much bluer and nicer that looks. So then what I do is I take each background and I go snippity snip and I use the polygonal lasso tool to cut it and bring it up so that I can kind of put it into place. So I think you're supposed to be seeing like the hallway floor back there, but that's not really the angle you would see it from. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cr uh, crop that out. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of the flat layer for a second and just turn on my frames. Then I'm gonna go to sample all layer and contiguous and I'm going to uh, select the orange and then I'm going to bump the expansion up a little bit on my ants or like, you know, the wand area so that it is encompassing um, a little more. So you can see the, the little ants are actually overlapping everything just a little bit. And 
this is important. So on the layer that has the new background, I hit um, Control Shift. Oops, Shift F5. Sorry, just Shift F5. And for use, I go to Content Aware. This thing has like saved my life. <laughs> and do a Content Aware fill. So what it does is it looks at this air, uh, this entire area, and says like, how do I neatly continue this image? and it just does like a nice little fill. And I used it uh, a lot <laughs> for the redos because I have a lot of areas that need it. And then I reselect. So the reason that I don't just go and like select right into the panel, uh, like, like I don't use the frame to just like be like boop and select. I always go a little bit on the outside just so there's a tiny bit of uh, background bleed to the uh, like underneath these gutters and underneath these frames so that there's no like weird pixelization at the edges and, and the images feel like complete images that are underneath the gutters and the frames. So I hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna invert the selection and that's good to go. And then I'm gonna go to this panel and um, I could cut this out, but we're here, we're doing it. <laughs> and I kind of want to show how I do my background, so. So here, this one's actually nearly good to go because I copied the original frame so closely. The only thing I want to do to this one is it's a little boring and Quasi's kind of being cute and funny here. So I want to um, like do something like I want to like highlight it a little more and maybe like lighten down here. And I think I'm going to go into my resources and go to textures. So these are textures that I've either made or found and they're like free to use. I use textures.com for a lot of them, but the, I think there's some other sites now. I'm gonna, these are ones I made. These are my halftone triangles. I use them a lot. I don't know. I think they kind of say goofy, goofy and lighthearted <laughs> a little bit. And let's turn them. I think I like that array better. And I'm going to invert them. Do an overlay. Click down. And this one I'm also, uh, I'm going to go back and just do a light highlight back here. And uh, in the previous page, uh, this wall that's kind of to Quasgi's right actually has some burn marks on it from Hugh, like running his fingers down the wall. So I'm just going to put some like glowy stripes here, but like the wall's kind of like healing itself now. So, um, So I don't want it to be too much. This was something that like, I remember when I wrote Try and Human, I really wanted to get into more uh, where like the interiors of the gray ships could be like torn up and ripped apart, but they would always like sort of heal themselves, or reform themselves. But it, it was, you know, same with like doors and stuff. Uh, doors would just sort of warp and open. They weren't like, it wasn't like Star Trek where they just like slid by, you know, slid open. But uh, it was something I really didn't know how to show <laughs> in a comic. I don't know if I still know how to show it, but. I think it gets across. Okay. So this is an interesting uh, background. This background uh, is actually referencing a scene that's occurring right now in Trying Human. So what I'm going to do, um, spoilers, I guess, if you haven't gotten this far, I'm actually going to go and grab one of those backgrounds. Um, to use and help me uh, color and align everything. I want that 
part though. So I'm sort of thinking about taking this all into, I don't do this often, but you know what, maybe just for like the funsies of this, the funsies of this tutorial, I will do it. So sometimes when I have a background that is kind of complicated or at a weird angle or something, I'll take it into uh, this area over here. <laughs> this, this is another one of my like working uh, uh, files. So this is where I do my background. Some of them, like I said, I don't do this all the time. So this was uh, the train station background. Uh, I wanted to just be able to see the whole thing and, you know, see so kind of see little mistakes and stuff where I was like working on it here. Uh, here's uh, the reptoid mothership in the, the hallway going down to the the meeting room is what I, the conference room. That's what I called it in my notes, the conference room. And there's the actual conference room, but it, you can see that these are kind of like on Dutch angles here. So like in the, uh, the finished page, like they're on kind of quirky angles and stuff because I like to make my life complicated apparently. <laughs> so anyway, let's, uh, let's bring some of this over here. Let's get rid of these. We don't need those open anymore. And, uh, let's take this. So. This is our inspiration and this is the uh, the final. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to hit these blues. But I don't think I'm going to be able to. That's okay. So since I can't do that exactly. Uh, let me make a duplicate. I'm kind of uh, winging this. Let me make this a mask and make this all black and lock it. That's so that I can recrop the image to the weird shape that this is. And then uh, I'm going to go in here. Now, Emmy of the Past was kind of watching out for me and she put black outlines on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to carefully go in with my quick selection tool, which is like a nice tool for, yeah. So there are these black outlines here. Okay. So it doesn't, it's not, it's being real cute and doesn't want to let me do it. Let me um, let me bump the saturation up and try to make these two colors really different. Just temporarily, <laughs> so I can select this. So I love this tool. It kind of is like a a painter's brush, and it allows you to sort of draw your areas of selection, which is super handy if you don't have a steady hand or you're just trying to select stuff really quickly. Okay, great. Let's get rid of that. And then we're going to layer via copy. So this is now our sky layer and we are going to completely desaturate it. And I'm going to invert it. Uh, I'm inverting it because if you see here, uh, the highlight is near the bottom, like near the skyline and the darker part is up towards the top. And the reason I'm making it black and white is hopefully I can put a color mask layer over top to try to salvage this. There's actually like only like one part in this, in the, the newer scene, uh, where you can actually see some clouds. So I'm not going to get too wild about painting them. Proceeds to spend eight hours painting clouds. <laughs> All 
I realize how cartoony these look. I'm going to try to make it not look so bad here in a sec, <laughs> hopefully. So this is a custom brush I made. Um, I was jealous of everybody having like these amazing smudge tools in like Open Canvas and Paint Tool Sci. Even Krita, I think, has a really nice smudge brush and like Photoshop's smudge tool is poop. <laughs> it's not very good. It's it lets you smudge a little bit, but uh, it's not what I would consider to be like artistic. <laughs> I mean, Photoshop at its core is meant for photo editing, so you're never meant to make art in it. I remember for a while, uh, Photoshop even, this was like back when I was in college over 10 years ago, there was even a time when Photoshop was like, the company was trying to have people move away from using Photoshop for artwork. Uh, but I think that was a bell they just couldn't unring. <laughs> so now that it's in black and white, I'm going to uh, do a big paint bucket over top on a new layer. And I'm going to go to, I always forget, uh, color. And clip there. So now it has a blue tinge. And then, not sure how well this is going to work, but we're going to we're gonna do this. That's really pretty, by the way. Just, just that little, like, image there. <laughs> Can, can it just take place during day? That would be nice. And then we're going to go and get this really hot, uh, like highlight blue color. No, that's not what I wanted. I want this to multiply. And I'm going to mask that. And then um, put my stars in. So um, something I've kind of figured out over the years is I, I have a star brush that I made a million years ago. And uh, I've noticed that if I don't, um, I'm gonna knock the count up slightly on the scatter. If I don't select like the exact area where I want to put these things, how come I have like 15 layers up here? <laughs> I've got a lot of layers. If I don't select like the exact area where I want to put my star, uh, my stars, uh, and just like let Photoshop just open canvas and let it do stars wherever it wants, it takes forever. So try not to do that too much anymore. I'm going to put like a little halo on my stars just to make them look all sparkly and romantic. I'm going to get rid of... So every now and then uh, two of my stars will like touch or something. There's no real way to avoid that. So I like to go in and kind of get rid of them. Um, I also... Let's set my... Uh, what should we use for an eraser? I'll just use this blobby brush. And so wherever the clouds were, I'm going to try to go up and kind of soften it so the clouds are sort of transparent. The stars are sort of dissipating into the horizon. Just a little bit. Don't really need to worry about down here since there's going to be trees. But um, another thing I like to do, uh, I'm pretty sure that like... I don't know if you can see it. There's a star like right here. I'm pretty sure that will be covered by my gutters and my frames, but I like to erase any stars that clip. Um, I don't know why. I've just always done that. <laughs> I think it looks tidier. Same with like stars that almost touch objects in the foreground like that. So like there was like a star next to where that uh, pine tree is going to be. Okay, so I think that looks good. The colors are really close. And I'm going to select all the sky-related layers and collapse them down. And I'm going to lock it. And I'll just name that sky. Normally, I don't name my layers uh, for 
pic- uh, pieces like this because uh, if I sit down to do it, I do it and it's done and I don't have a lot of layers. Um, now, larger pieces, I will um, I will name all the layers and try to keep everything organized, especially if it's like art that I'm going to post on my Patreon, like the Photoshop files. So I actually don't mind these pine trees. I think they're kind of cute looking, but they don't really fit the look of the comic or at least the newer stuff. So I'm going to just go in with kind of a bubbly brush. I really love uh, pine trees. They're some of my favorite types of trees. Um, I used to draw them all the time when I was a kid. You know, like when you're a kid and they, they teach you to do this shit. To do your trees. <laughs> doesn't really work very well because I'm using a, <laughs> a line correction tool and it's trying to fight me a little bit. But I used to do that all the time. It was one of my favorite things to draw. My absolute favorite trees, besides pine trees, are um, birch trees. I think they're so pretty. I Like, they're, they're trunks. Like, uh, my parents have a bunch of birch trees near their house. And uh, they stay, like, really crisp and white all year. And sometimes they just look like they're glowing. They're so bright. I just think they're pretty. <laughs> I don't really know when I fell so in love with birch trees. Um, it's kind of funny. Uh, my mom was over. Sorry, this is turning to like Emmy Till Stories time. But uh, <laughs> my mom was over and I had a candle that was, um, I forget what it was called. It was called like Fall Rain or something. It was like a Yankee candle. and uh, But it had pictures of birch trees on it. And my mom goes, did you get this? Because of the scent or because it has birch trees on it? And I said, both. <laughs> both. So, as much as I hate to do it, I think these trees are going to go full silhouette like these ones. Just so that the narrative, the visual narrative matches. Um... So that later on when you're like, oops, not that big. <laughs> it's like, I need to make my brush bigger. So that later on, like when you see these scenes, you're like, ah, oh, got it. It's all coming together. There we go. It's actually multiple parts where uh, he was thinking about these trees. I don't know why, but I like really got stuck on this idea of that he would like remember these trees. Maybe it's sort of like uh, the grays maybe didn't erase the memory of these things because it was sort of a non-threatening, non-controversial image in his mind. So it's not something they would actually have to like care if he remembered or not. There we go. I think that looks good and I think it matches, you know. Um, I'm Cure. Well, it's too late for that. <laughs> I was like, well, I think I'm gonna try to make the. So there we go. New old. There's things about this I like, but 
it's just, eh, you know, whatever. We're gonna, we are dedicated to making new visuals for this comic and we're gonna do it. So let's do this. It should sit in the corner. Nice. I like that. I think that looks good, you know? And uh, real quick, let me just... Uh, I'm actually just going to get rid of these two layers. I don't need them. I like to... I don't know why, but some of these more detailed backgrounds I like to keep just to look at sometimes. I think they're pretty. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's... Uh, do another one. So here you can definitely see parts of the hallway more clearly. Like you can see where the corner, like the edge of the hallway meets the floor and stuff. What's interesting here is uh, you can't see Hugh. <laughs> you can't even see his legs or anything. So I was looking at it earlier and I thought, well, maybe I'll paint them back in. So here, uh, you're actually missing quite a bit of visual information uh, in the edges. I'm not sure how I got away with that. Oh, because it was cropped quite a bit, that, that whole... Yeah, look how much further in it's cropped. Okay, so we are going to do what I did last time. I'm going to select the orange. Make it a little bigger. Uh, control F5, content aware fill. Here we go. So I think I saw like a little bit that I couldn't select. I'm just going to go under the edges. Great. Okay, cool. So now what we're going to do. So we're going to select smaller areas that are kind of uncolored, unfinished. Now I think, yeah, that's all under his head. So I'm actually not going to worry about that. What about, that's all under the head. But this part. So the other bad thing about having smaller text now is that, um, areas like this would have been covered up by the, the text but they're not anymore. So I'm going to go in here and select this and hit content aware again. See if it, it's doing a pretty good job. Uh, since these are pretty simple, like gradient backgrounds, I think it's having an okay time filling them and cleaning them up. Yeah. So here it left like a little bit of a highlight. I'll have to reselect that and fill it. Okay. So If I'm going to go with a background like this, it's pretty soft, but I think I can kind of sharpen up little areas. So I don't know. What's a little like wherever this, whatever's happening here, it's like off a little bit. This like reflection. So I'm going to try to just tighten up the edges a little more. Yeah, I don't like how this is kind of wobbly in here. This is also like kind of strange. Sorry, I'm like kind of nitpicking this, but this is the last time I'll ever have free reign over these pages. So I really want them to uh, to shine. <laughs> So 
So now it kind of looks like um, there's more space back here. Like there's another part of the hallway. Though the angle is slightly off, I think. So I'm like looking at this and I'm trying to figure out like what these backgrounds were because I think they're like in a narrow hallway and this doesn't look like that. I like that though. <laughs> I like whatever's happening there. Maybe I could get away with doing something like this. I think this is better. I think this, it's not gr like, it's not amazing. It's not like a computer model of the, like some of my other backgrounds, but it's, it's getting there. It knows, it knows what it is. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about putting Hugh here, but I think he's just going to look strange and distracting, distracting, distracting. Does sound like a real word. Distracting. Yeah, it's a real word. Maybe the way I'm saying it's funny. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry this is kind of tedious, but hopefully, hopefully there is some uh, enjoyment out of all of this. So like here, I think you would be able to see so you see how the ceiling has these like um oval lights, these like circular lights. I think you should be able to see that from. from this panel. And then last but not least, this guy. So I delete all the like scrap backgrounds, <laughs> the frame that the backgrounds come in. Um, and now what I'm going to try to do is get this whole thing looking good. So I kind of moved Hugh from his original location. You can see the old uh, reflection of the old drawing in the floor here. So you can see I kind of moved it over, but I want the box uh, like the end of the hallway to sort of frame his body here. So he, he really pops out. So that's where that's going to go. And I noticed that there is a black line right there. I'm going to get rid of that, turn off my flats, turn on my frames, my empty frames. I'm going to sample all layers on the orange, hit control F5, content aware, see what it does. That's pretty good. I always say it's pretty good. <laughs> I always have to go in and kind of fix it up. So. See all my old brush strokes. I'm gonna go in and I'm uh, gonna smudge as much of this away as I can. So what it's doing is um, when you smudge out to the edge of a frame, there's nothing out there for it to hold on to because my layer is transparency locked. So it just starts making like white blobs wherever I touch the edge. So I just have to be kind of mindful of that. It's not really that big of a deal, though. It's easily fixed. Hmm. 
right there is trying to grab black. Actually, how far? Nah, you're still gonna see it. So, yeah, sometimes I'm like, eh, you won't be able to see that way. <laughs> Just trying to correct the angles here a little bit. They're not perfect. I'm not using um, guides, and I know I should. Okay, so one thing I'm going to try to do is uh, rotate the canvas and try to uh, get it so that this is square uh, to my canvas so that I can draw straight lines more easily. So what I do is I just kind of eyeball it against the edge of my screen. Uh, it's getting cut off just a tiny bit so it might be hard to see, but I just kind of wiggle it into position. That's pretty good. And then I go in and using the shift key, paint new straight lines. So I'm thinking up here, I'm going to have to completely repaint the ceiling as much as I don't want to, but it's looking a little rough in places. It's kind of interesting uh, if I can get a little sci-fi, a little, little ufology knowledge on you there. Um, a lot of times uh, my portrayal of the gray ships is pretty, um, <laughs> pretty fancy um, from abductees that I've talked to and books I've read. Uh, the gray ships are gray-ish white. But uh, there's no lighting, so to speak, on them. A lot of times people report just sort of light emanating from everywhere. Like it's just the rooms are sort of bright with no light source. And um, way back in the beginning, I did do some like test rooms to see like, well, how would I show that? Or like I would just do bright rooms. And I found that for a comic it's kind of dull looking so i sort of allotted myself to allow for lights uh with something and i made the floors really shiny <laughs> so like a lot of the surfaces are really reflective um oops that's not where i want to be i want to be in redos and i also sort of make the architecture of the deep parts of the ship so like the the this room here with all these crisscrossing platforms there's nothing I've never heard of anything like that on a gray ship but uh, just trying to make it look nice for everybody so 
It does seem like the room, I did intend the room to get darker as it goes, this hallway area goes back, but I feel like the color is slightly off. I can't even tell if it's like any different at all. It is slightly, it's like slightly colder. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put highlights back here. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> I was like, eh, not liking it, not feeling it. I do like that though. Ugh, I hate how his like toe is uh, like touching the wall there ever so slightly. What does this look like? So my hue is slightly bigger. Or <laughs> I act like I didn't draw the other one. Uh, <laughs> the hue of the past. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the background slightly bigger too, to compensate for that. That feels way better. Yeah, that feels way more proportional. Okay. So then I'm going to take Hugh. Well, I'm actually just going to take his legs. Well, no, I'm going to take his whole body because the door blur or the door reflection goes pretty far. So I'm going to need like his whole body. So uh, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that. I'm going to invert his height. I'm going to align his ankles. I'm going to put my little navigational compass from the transform tool right there. And I'm going to tilt it until, I'm thinking, <laughs> he's technically <sighs> doing math in my head. Uh, 100 and Yeah, so he's kind of got his foot up there, so yeah, I think that's right. No, 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 because it would align with the door, wouldn't it? <laughs> Math. I forget, it's a 12 uh, degree angle. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the gap between his hip and the door here, and then his hip and the door here. That's pretty close. It's not exact, but it's close. So then I go in here and then I'm just going to take his foot and sort of warp it up to meet its reflection. And then I'm going to going to uh, knock the saturation and uh, darkness, well, not darkness, lightness <laughs> down. And then I'm going to come in here and erase a good chunk of that reflection. And then I'm going to smoosh it down and then I just got to put the shadow on the floor for hue. And that is it. That's all the backgrounds for 
uh, volume three. Dunsies. Nice. Okay. So I'm going to explain the shading and then I'm just going to basically get to it and speed the footage back up again. I thought since the, uh, the backgrounds were kind of, uh, each one was sort of like a unique little experience, <laughs> uh, it was better to do it on camera, so to speak, with commentary. Um, so what I do is I go to an old page and I turn off all the effects layers and I take the shadow layer and I take the highlight layer. Uh, you can't see it, but over on the side I have a, a palette with two alternating colors. I duplicate my flats layer. I lock it. I transparency lock it. So that means nothing can bleed outside this area that's colored in. I hit, I uncheck, uh, conti uh, blah, blah. I uncheck contiguous sample all layers and anti-alias from my magic wand tool and select the blacks. And using my darker color, I do a fill and then I control shift I and invert and then switch to my lighter color and go uh, shift F5 and fill it in with the lighter color. And then I go to my pencil tool. Isn't this fun guys? We're learning so much. I turn my line layer on just so I can see it. Take my shadow layer. I go in and just start drawing in where the shadows will go. I try not to overcomplicate my shadows anymore. I used to get pretty uh, ridiculous in my shading and it was, it took forever and it was very uh, time consuming to reproduce on a mass scale. So I use kind of the same lighting sources a lot, uh, unless it's like a dramatic scene, then I kind of try to step out of the box a little bit. But generally, this is how I shade. I have to say, sometimes I'm like, ugh, I don't want to shade. And I'll, I'll get right up to the part where I actually have to shade the art. And uh, I'll just stop. I'll be like, I'm done. I'm done for the day or whatever. And I'll either work on something else or just stop altogether and be like, that's it. I'm going to bed. <laughs> but uh, now I kind of get a little excited for shading because that usually means I'm near the end. Um, I used to get like that with inking. Inking used to be like one of the most time consuming parts of making Trine Human. Um, if you were ever around in the early days, I used to use the pen tool to do all my inking because I didn't want wobbly lines. And I remember I was talking to another artist about this. I was like, um, I was saying that, you know, because they saw that I was always using the pen tool to ink everything in Photoshop. And uh, they were like, well, just, just deal with wobbly lines. And I was like, no, <laughs> I'll never settle for wobbly lines. I would rather have like anal uh, retentive control over my line art, then have it be messy. I've just always been like that. But then, uh, once Maga Studio came out, oh, 
that was such a dream. I remember the first time I ever inked a page in Manga Studio. I, uh, I actually, I didn't have any ready. Um, so I just grabbed one, uh, like an old sketch. It was like, tell him, I was streaming actually when I tried it out. And I was like, okay guys, time me while I do this. And I think I inked the page in like 20 minutes or something. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> revolutionizing my life. All right, so uh, that's basically how I uh, shade a panel. And then at the end, I'll hit multiply and you can see what it looks like. I also need to do uh, the reds of Koski's eyes there. I know, I, I noticed a long time ago, I just haven't brought it up. So <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna run through and ink this quickly and, uh, or not ink this, uh, shade this quickly. And then uh, I'll show you how I do kind of like the finishing up stuff. Okay, see you in a second. Okay, so I finished shading uh, the whole image and I also added just some like little shines here and there and that is the Slayer here, Shines, it's up in my effects folder. Um, the only other thing I have left to do is I like to go in and kind of um, adjust some of the line colors. So like on these little, uh, I don't know what you call them, like motion lines, motion blur lines. I like to usually make them some other color other than black to, uh, just to uh, like differentiate them from the character line art. I don't always do it, but I do it a lot. <laughs> so I figure it's worth mentioning. see here. I also like to sometimes, like that, I would sometimes set that back, but I, I actually don't mind it being black. Okay. And then I'm going to go back into my effects window and I, I'm going to call this dark fade. <laughs> and I'm going to select this uh, Kwaski that is in the foreground and find a color with, from the background and put it on top and then say multiply. And then, <laughs> because now this sort of matches uh, Hugh's shoulder here, I'm going to do a light color. in the foreground. And I'm going to call this light fade. And same deal, I'm going to take a color that is already in my palette, so something like from the background, and paint bucket that in. Hit screen. Now that's really light and I will adjust it in a second, but now uh, it's kind of overlapping Kwaski's uh, line art. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to select Hugh's shoulder and invert my selection and then go in with a hard brush, just erase any of that overlap so it looks nice and tidy. And then I'm going to both saturate and darken this just slightly. Forgot a little bit right there. I'm also going to just erase a little bit of that. Also, I'm seeing like some kind of line or something in there. I think it's on the background, so I'm just gonna like boop and cover that. <laughs> I don't know what that was. It was a little noise and it was uh, 
bothering me. So now I'm actually going to turn off the screen layer because I want to see what this color ended up being now that I adjusted it with an effect on. Okay, cool. Got it. Hit screen again. And then this hue, I'm also going to uh, push back by doing a fade. I actually want to uh, try something here. I'm going to put this uh, fade for hue, uh, full body hue on its own panel. I'm going to double click or on its own layer and then I'm going to double click on it and go to inner glow for effects and I kind of want to see what that looks like with like like the glow from the doorway back there is sort of I don't know if that really looks good. I kind of look at my navigator down in the corner to see if it I don't mind it, but I think it's kind of intense and unnecessary. So what I can do is I can hand paint. Just in some areas. Actually, that one in front of the wall, this part in front of the wall wouldn't have it. So let's just keep it on the U groin, the hand, anything that kind of clips in front of the doorway. Give it a little, give it a little pop. And then down here, I'm going to just darken this slightly because this part's not in front of the light source. And <clears throat> this is kind of a motion that he's doing where he's sort of like saluting Kwaski, like, in a, I don't know, a stupid way. <laughs> In a joking way but I need to uh, push that back so I'm gonna select around where the hand is I'm gonna go to the background layer and I'm gonna say layer via copy and I'm gonna put that uh, in my effects window and I'm gonna say like, BG block and I'm gonna put it at 50% no a little higher than that yeah like 65% transparency would be good I think that's pretty good. The only other thing I kind of wanted to do was um, put a um, sort of a dark gradient on hue here. I think that looks nice. Okay, so now we're going to do the text. And I've actually made tutorials about this in the past, but you know, why not? Let's do it again. So what I usually do is I make a layer. This is just temporary. It it uh, pushes all the artwork back so that I can see what I'm doing. And uh, then I also make a new layer and take the fill down on that as well. Now my text I've already prepared ahead of time. Uh, so and you watched me do that. And what I do is, for my text, I always put a border around it so that uh, my bubbles, my balloons, whatever you'd like to call them, are nicely spaced and you don't have uh, text writing right up to the edge of the bubble. Uh, some people say that you should be able to take one of your O's and like run it the whole way around without having it hit the edge of any text so kind of the same principle this is just how I do it and then I take the vector tool and go around and draw ovals now um, for Western comics you want your balloons to be wider than they are tall and then uh, for manga 
it's the opposite. <clears throat> it's kind of cool sometimes in manga when a character is supposed to be speaking English. Um, like in the Jap, like if they have like a Westerner who's talking, the bubbles get oriented a different way. <laughs> they get oriented like the American comic way. I always thought that was kind of cool. So these are all separate right now, but once I uh, collapse everything down, I'll move them in together. So I know a lot of comic artists, they will leave their type layers open. Um, I choose not to do that. One, because I'm dealing with a lot of pages at this point. They're kind of uh, huge files. <laughs> if I leave the text layers open, I, I understand why they do it. The ease of being able to go back and like edit text if you're about to go into print or whatever. But um, for me, I just, I never did that. I would rather just uh, go back and fix it if I have to fix it, but. Um, real quick, did I try doing it like, yeah, no, I don't like that. See how it looks kind of like a cake. You don't want that. <laughs> it's better to just have it look sort of wide and longish. then uh, have like sort of an awkward trapezoidal shape that you can't really fit your uh, text into. <sighs> okay. I tend to do this a lot. If you ever watch me uh, live on Twitch when I'm working on my pages, I tend to go back and like touch up text right near the end because I'm never satisfied. <laughs> No, it's just after you look at it for a while, like while you're drawing on the page and stuff, you start to uh, think about how the panels are organized and laid out a little more differently. And so you end up changing text and other things to fit it a little better. So uh, as we're winding down on this page, I figure I might as well talk about plans for the other books. So there's only eight books in the series. We're on book three. I plan to do a Kickstarter for book four and five together and then books um, six and seven together and then eight will just kind of be like my big blowout Kickstarter. And uh, that'll be done. Then the whole series will be done and I will ride off into the sunset and never look back. But uh, I just want to thank everybody who has given to the Kickstarter and helped support the book. Make my little trying human ufology romance comic dreams come true. I actually, uh, while I was letting videos from this recording session render today, I was going back and like checking out, uh, making sure everything was looking good. I actually have to send this to my editor to make sure I don't have any typos. You know, as much as I go over it and go over it and people write me and let me know if there's typos and stuff, I always miss some. <laughs> I always miss like one and so it's always good to have somebody else come and look at it. Man, I, I forget which page it was, but I had a page that I did sort of recently. It was a redo, and um, there was like a thousand typos on the page. It, it just, I went back and read it, and it made no sense. I think I was really tired when I worked on it. And uh, I also changed like one of the lines, which I think kind of threw off my, my typing juju. <laughs> Trying to think which page it was. That was a recent page. It was like I think it was the page where um, EB one is talking to Hugh. Yes, it's the one where he's talking to Hugh, and there's like um, a galaxy, like an orange galaxy, or I don't know, galactic center point or something. I I never really had an intention for what that was supposed to be, but anyway, it's a couple pages back from this one, and uh, yeah. None of EB one's lines made any sense and I had to fix a million typos and there were like people were emailing me about the same typo and there was actually like four others 
on the same page. So, yeah, good, great, smart. I think I might. Oh, I don't know what to do with this. I don't like to have Hugh covered, especially on the last panel of the comic. I think I'm gonna move this up to his shoulder. Because, yeah, this is all gonna get cut off, isn't it? I have a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Generous crop areas. Normally, it's like that much will get cropped, but I'm so paranoid that I have giant crops on the sides of my page. So then what I do is I go through and I select everything that is supposed to be a gray and I invert it. And I seem to lose a little bit of the white uh, information around the text. So I tend to pop up the uh, contrast with the gray text. I think it just looks a little nicer. And then uh, I double click on the layer and change the stroke to white to represent the telepathy. So, um, the hue, and that would be Kwaski. And now it's just a matter of adding a few last things, one of which being the uh, tails on the bubbles, which in Trying Human they're kind of like um, polygonal shape as opposed they're polygonal. <laughs> Is that a word? Polygonal? I also talked about having the f one of these fingers like overlap, and I think I am going to do that. I chose the uh, polygonal tails some time ago. Um, they were just quicker for me to do with the amount of pages I was doing. But in a lot of my other comics, I do the more um, <clears throat> typical tails that kind of taper off and curve and all that. Once in a blue moon, I will sneak one into uh, trying human, but generally I don't. <laughs> if you've read uh, my comic about the, it's called The Mysterious Disappearance of Frederick uh, Valentich. It's based on the true story of a man who claimed to have seen a UFO and then was never seen again. Um, that one has like tapered tails and stuff. It also has kind of cool bubbles. I did sort of, I was experimenting with some styles in that one, and I did uh, these like sort of, I don't know, they have like sort of torn edges, I guess. They're kind of rough edges. I think they're cool looking. I'm probably going to use them in another comic. They gave me that true indie comic feeling. <laughs> When I was a wee lad and I was first doing uh, all this stuff, getting into comics and whatever, I really didn't care what the balloons looked like as long as they were conveying, you know, the information that I needed them to. But now I... Uh, I really have like my own methods down and I, I kind of have an eye now for like what looks good and what doesn't. Sometimes that I see incorrect balloons and stuff in other comics, even though I do that thing with the eye, which I get no end of shit about from other comic artists, <laughs> where I always capitalize on my eyes. I think I mentioned that earlier. But like other stuff like formatting issues and stuff with bubbles, I'm like, no, not formatting issues. Anyway. So the last thing we have to do is Kwaski goes ha ha here. And I am too lazy to go and look and see if I have another ha ha I can use. So I'm just going to redraw one. Uh, a lot of times for sound effects, um, I try to keep them looking consistent. So like EB1 when his like arm clicks or whatever that is supposed to be, uh, I tend to uh, go and get the same sound effect again just so I can have some consistency. On that? Why is this lagging? It's kind of lagging right now. Not sure why. I might have too many things running. So I'm just going to pick some random color. 
Uh, I kind of want haha to be a sound effect, which is why I'm penning it by hand. Maybe I, I won't do ha ha, maybe I'll just do ha. <laughs> Not sure which, where, like, I don't know. I don't know where I want this. I guess there? It sort of covers Hugh's arm a little bit, but I, I think we'll live. I think we're gonna get through this. I'm going to go back to my regular brushes, somewhere in there. Kind of make that a little hotter. And I am going to make this tad smaller. And then all I do is, so this has like a ton of effects applied to it now. Um, because I want it to pick up this border, I would um, collapse it down by hitting Control E. And so now it's got, I apologize, this is kind of cut off because of the edge of my screen. But uh, so now it's sort of down lower. And because uh, Kwaski speaks plainly without telepathy, uh, I'm not going to bother putting a tail on this because it's so close to his face. I think that uh, you realize that Kwaski is the one saying this. <laughs> if not, let me put some like, let's see what some like red. I think that uh, that helps some. But if you can't figure out the quasi saying that, then maybe you shouldn't be reading this comic, huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> Come back. So, uh, yeah, that pretty much does it. Uh, that's the end of book three. Uh, as far as redos are concerned, I haven't really looked over book four and five, but they're, they're pretty decent, so they probably won't be getting this kind of detailed treatment. But uh, yeah, so the last thing I do here is I go all the way out, I sl uh, select the whole page, go to my crop tool, and do another crop, make sure that there's nothing hiding on the outside, and then uh, let's go back to the old page just to check things. So there's the old page, make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, the new one uh, really pops, I think. Oh man, them yellow teeth of Quasi's. All right, so uh, that'll do it. And uh, I'll be sending out the backer kit surveys within like a day or so. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.